but you saw us rebuild our 2JZ GTE. Now it's time to get this thing back into our Mark IV Supra. Swung by Advanced Auto Parts to pick up some things we need to get this thing running, so let's get into it. Welcome back to the Throttle YouTube channel, guys. My name is Quinn, and on the stand here, we have our finished and complete built 2JZ GTE for our Mark IV Supra build this year. We are going to be putting this engine in the car. I don't want to scratch all of our new beautiful shiny bits, so the plasma band intake manifold and plasma band valve covers are gonna be coming off, along with our Garrett Turbo with RTEC manifold. After we pull all this beautiful stuff off, we are gonna be going through and adding a bunch of sensors onto the engine that need to go in. These were provided by our friends over at Advanced Auto Parts. If you guys are looking for some engine sensors, Head over to Advanced Auto Parts, they have literally everything. Every sensor we're putting on this engine, crank position, cam position, knock, oil pressure sensor, all of the OEM sensors. We have a lot of work to do, guys. Let's get started. So I've got our coolant crossover tube installed here. So this is gonna allow us to run a heater core. I've also installed our oil feed fitting for the turbo. Next up is I wanna get our cylinder head exhaust manifold studs off of the old damaged head and onto our new engine. I'm about to start packing this 2JZ full of sensors. If you guys need some sensors or some other maintenance items for your car, head over to Advanced Auto Parts. Our 2JZ is just about ready to go in the Supra. It looks good. I even fabbed up some engine lift brackets for it. We didn't have any the last time we pulled it out with a ratchet scrap and it was not the answer. So I whipped those up real quick. However, our transmission is looking pretty dusty. So we're gonna do a full clean on this transmission, get it looking nice, and then we'll take the engine off the stand, get the trans on and get this thing in the car. Our V160 is all cleaned up, it looks good. Our engine is ready to go in, so is our transmission, but having a chat with Mickey, we've decided to change a few last minute things as far as the coolant setup on this engine goes. So this is the coolant crossover pipe. This runs around the side, down the back of the block, and then back up. So this is our heater fitting. We have a couple of coolant fittings back here for the turbo we're gonna be utilizing. This one is not on the transfer tube. We are gonna be using absolutely nothing on this side, this coolant port is going to get deleted. We're going to be bypassing this and we don't need our little vacuum fittings here. So what we're going to do is actually take the coolant transfer tube back off and modify it. We're going to lop it off right about here, crush it and close it because these are the two ports we're going to be utilizing. Nothing from here that way is going to be used. In addition to that, we're also going to be blocking off this port and plugging that. So this actually, um, when we first got the car, this was coming out, going to a liquid to oil cooler, then running right back into the block. So deleting that's gonna pull some unnecessary heat out of the cooling system. It'll make this side of the engine block a lot more simple and kind of condense the cooling system, which is really nice. So we're gonna pull this off, modify it, and then put it right back on. So the last thing I'm gonna be installing on this JZ before we pull it off a stand is this. This is a Chase Base thermostatic oil sandwich plate. It's gonna allow us to only utilize that oil cooler when the engine is up to temperature, and that's good because you don't want to overcool the oil. 
It will help warm the engine up, and it's a very simple sandwich plate bolt-on. We're also gonna be running a Grex Gretti oil filter relocation kit. So this is the oil filter relocation kit that we got, and uh, unfortunately, it does not have AN-10. It has push-on-10. So what we found out is Gretti actually makes parts to run a dash 10 line setup on this. So we're gonna order those, wait till it comes in, and then when it comes in, and we'll be installing this. This is actually a really cool part. So one side is for the engine and the other side is for the oil filter. So this side is actually gonna go on top like that. And then the other one is going to receive our oil filter. So that could be remote mounted. The problem with the Jay-Z is that the oil filter is here. And when this is in the engine, it's buried halfway. You take the oil filter off and it coats literally everything under in oil, which sucks. So the setup, once we have it done, is going to look something like this. Of course, except we're gonna have the dash 10s here. So this is gonna allow us to run the remote oil filter. Typically what we will do on a lot of the cars we build is we will run an oil filter relocation kit like this and then run this to the cooler and then run that to the filter and then back into here. But that doesn't utilize the thermostatic aspect of this. That oil cooler is gonna be cooling all the time and having a thermostatic allows the engine oil to warm up quicker, which in turn warms up the engine quicker. And on something like this with a big ring gap and forged internals on E85, it's gonna have a rough life. These things are not gonna like cold starting very much. And so having that thermostatic oil filter actually helps the engine get up the temp faster and run better. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Throttle YouTube channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. So there are a lot of ways to remove a pilot bearing. One of those is a puller, but we have a pilot bearing puller and it doesn't fit because this one's so small. So what you can do is you can pack the inside of the bearing with, not the inside of the bearing, behind the bearing. In this case, we're using paper towel. Usually I'll use bread or wheat works great. Uh, a lot of people use grease. So you get a socket that's about the same size as the hole and then you just fill it full of crap and then you hammer it and then it comes out. I didn't have any bread so I'm using paper towels and this is the first time using paper towels and it seems to be working pretty well, so. Our clutch has arrived for the 2JZ. So this is a triple disc Clutch Masters clutch with a lightweight single uh, mass flywheel. We have the throttle bearing, which is a very different style than the factory throttle bearing, which is gonna be good because it's gonna be able to handle the pressure of this clutch. It's a much heavier clutch than the factory one was. The original clutch was a single disc. It was a six bucket we pulled out of the car. This is gonna do a much better job at handling the power that this JZ is gonna make. This thing is rated for about 1300 horsepower. I don't think we're gonna get to that level. We're gonna probably be somewhere around a thousand. So this should be plenty fine for doing the job for that. I'm looking forward to figuring out how this whole setup goes together and let's get this done. Clutch Masters did provide a set of uh, new flywheel bolts. However, you know, we're gonna run ARP. Boy. So what's the deal with ARP? Are they just rated, like they have a better rating? Are they a harder bolt or like, what's so special about them? What's so special about them is that they make bolts. Yeah, you so I mean, me? when someone so, builds a motor, most of the time you hear, yeah, I've got yeah, ARP but, head studs. Like, because they make just uh, bolts, they focus on making bolts and they make really good bolts. That's the difference. So they're like an industry leading? Pretty much, yeah. They have a lot of technology, a really good steel blend, and they just make really strong stuff, man. That's, that's the focus. Right, you can just go like Get our socks on here.
when we did the twin disc for the um, for the Viper, I had to assemble everything and take a couple of measurements and torque everything and make sure things were aligned. But this seems to be pretty much pre-assembled out of the box. They've already got paint marks for where everything was torqued. So I think we just literally pop this on the flywheel as is and we're jamming. Our twin disc is installed. The clutch itself was super easy. The slave went on. It's a very different style than OEM, so it was a little bit tricky to get it all set up, but we're all good. So we're gonna put the trans on the motor, and then this thing is going in that, which is gonna be beautiful. on you. <laughs> he jumped in the air so it was the height of your mouth. <laughs> Quinn is getting ready to get the engine installed. One of the things we have here is a brake booster release from Chase Base. Super cool. It also comes with a bias adjustment right here. It comes with its own lever adjustment for the uh, brake pedal itself. This thing is fully adjustable. To the left of us, we have these Clutch Master from Time Motorsports, and it comes with everything you need to put it in our Mark IV Supra, to including the adapter plate. Wipe that down, let's wipe this down and it's gonna go through the firewall. And on the other side, we're gonna put some nuts in it. These nuts. <laughs> it's gonna hold it in place and we'll be able to continue from the front to put the master in. Bro. What's wrong, Ricky? Bro, there's a bracket that goes like this. And then the stud for the clutch master is here. And then there's a fuse box right here with relays. So I have to grab this nut, go in, be go in between the two, and then go through to put this thing in. Sounds simple. That's why Quinn was mother effing this car when he was trying to take this yeah, thing apart. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's roll the clip back. Go back to when Quinn was mother effing everything in the Supra. Boy, why the f put a brace there? Quinn, you dumb. This is why nobody buys Supras because you're. Roll the clip where he's like, <laughs> I'm so excited to work on this car. It's gonna be a really cool, fun build. I've been waiting to build a Mark IV for quite a long time. We're gonna make it happen. You sure that's not gonna cross thread? No, no, it'll be good. And then you see how it does this? Because I need the thing. So this is what you do. You put tape here. Because I need it to be like, just a little bit flimpy, not a lot. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna put tape here. And this is gonna help me keep it from doing that. But if we need to, it'll still do it. You know what I mean? Mm. That's what we do. That's nice invention.
that looks amazing with the orange. Oh my God. And the black billet in the background is gonna match with valve covers. So if you guys wanna check this parts out, the link's in the description below. So we're gonna put the engine in and uh, I would like to have this car on the rack. So we're gonna put it on the rack and then we're gonna put the engine in. Be able to jump down there. Are we in? Ow! Oh. oh yeah, we're in. We just gotta thread the last bolt on the bottom of the motor mount, and then Ricky's gotta pop in the trans cross member. And then, are you looking good for alignment down there, Ricky? I look like it. Yeah. We are set. We are in, baby. It actually lined up perfectly. After we put the engine with the motor mount on. Let's go, baby. Now start her up. Bear back. Let's start, start her up. Come on, Quinn, start it. Let's go. Two JZ GTE is back in the Supra. So now we're gonna start putting some of the beautiful parts that we took off the motor initially back on. These are our exhaust manifold gaskets. I just finished installing our Artec exhaust manifold and as you guys can see, it's a very beautiful piece. It is a cast six to one big V-band for our G42 turbo. One of the benefits of having a cast exhaust manifold like this is it keeps everything very compact. As you guys can see, there was a lot of room in front of the manifold, a lot of room behind the manifold. A lot of tubular manifold setups, they'll move the turbo and there'll be cross tubes going everywhere. And the Artec manifold is very compact and concise, which is really cool. And it's also gonna give us a very good orientation on our turbo and make everything very clean and presentable. So I'm putting our new OEM Toyota valve cover gaskets onto our beautiful Plasma Man valve covers. We're gonna pop these bad boys on, but before we do that, I'm gonna lube the camshaft up with some assembly lube for the last time, and then we will close them up for good.
We got our plasma man uh, valve covers on, and these are very beautiful pieces. We had them actually etch our logo in, which is really cool. And we have two massive catch can ports on the back, which is really nice. A huge upgrade over the factory valve covers. So now we're gonna throw our PRP uh, ignition coil retainer in. So this is set up for R35 GTR coil, so they're gonna give us a much stronger spark with this cool kit. So for now, I'm gonna put the retainer in, and then we'll move on to installing our beautiful Garrett Turbo. So this is the oh. exhaust turbine housing for our G42. Big old V-band. We're gonna drop that guy on. All right, this is our big boy here. This is a G42 1200 by Garrett. And this thing is going to not only look beautiful in the engine bay, but it is also going to get us to the thousand horsepower mark that we want to get to with this Jay-Z. That barely fits between the strut tower. I guess built any projects with a turbo this size? Uh, not yet. I have a turbo pretty much that size for the, uh, well, another project. I ooh, haven't ooh, started. Secret. So no, I haven't completed a project with one of these yet. I can't wait to see it all clocked in the right configuration. The size effect, the spool, like you're gonna have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are a lot of factors that change how the turbo acts. Size is one of them, AR is one of them, uh, ball bearing or journal bearing is another one. Inducer size, exducer size, literally every aspect of it. But with a bigger turbo, it takes a lot longer to spool, especially on something like a three liter engine. This is a relatively, for an import, it would be a big-ish displacement engine, but in terms of like engines overall, it's a pretty medium to low displacement engine. So this thing is gonna take a while to spool up, but when it spools up, it's gonna be an absolute party. It's just you're gonna punch it at two grand and it's gonna do nothing. And then it's gonna get to three grand and it's probably not gonna do anything. And then I'll get to four grand and it'll probably do nothing. Really? And then and then after that, it's gonna kick on and it's gonna be game over. <laughs> After it spools up, it'll definitely take Toretto and a half mile, quarter mile, whatever it is. That railroad crossing up there is exactly a quarter mile away from here. Nice. How are you? That was his life. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. He, he might have won. He might have won in the first movie, but with this, done, dude. Toretto. Did he win in the first movie? No, it was like a dead. I mean, he, it was he, like a dead, he hit a train. It was, so. it was debatable in the first movie, but with this, Game over, dude. Game He's not standing back. a chance? Nope. So the last piece we're gonna put on is gonna be a temporary and it's gonna be our plasma man. Beautiful intake manifold. Drop this on for the looks, baby. We do still have a lot of work to do under this. We don't have our wiring harness or any of the vacuum set up. But for now, I wanna see it on. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. Obviously, we got a lot of stuff done. We still have a lot of stuff to do. We got our engine fully built to JZ off of the stand. We put a twin plate clutch on, got our V160 back in and dropped this thing in, threw some beautiful parts on it. Obviously, there's still a lot we need to get done. We need to put the rest of the pulleys together. We need to start working on our cooling system. Our intake manifold is on just for looks, but we haven't done anything as far as that. So there's still a lot of work to do before we get this engine fired up. Let me know down in the comments what do you guys think of the Supra so far. I think it's turning out epic. This is an absolutely fun build and I'd love to be a part of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.